Hey everybody, welcome to episode four of One Bottle Each, where my guest and I each select a bottle for us to taste. This is the first episode where I'm actually in the same space, albeit socially distanced, with my guest. My guest today is my friend Matt Landy. Matt is manager of the Fiesta, a hospitality and banquet hall in Woodbridge, New Jersey. Welcome, Matt, and thanks for being here. Thank you. So is it uh, your experience in the hospitality industry that got you into wine? Is that how you got the itch for wine, or did wine come to you in some other manner? No. One day in the 90s, we decided that possibly beer is not the answer to everything. So we went out and bought a book and started drinking wine. So you looked towards wine? Yes. Was the Bible an option as well? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot of bring your own restaurants and we just started researching and looking into it and then I caught the bug and my wife just follows along is what she I just, just follows what she do I say yes uh, is there a, a particular wine that was a watershed moment once you started once you read the book and started drinking yes a friend of ours had a Gergich Zinfandel and we tasted it and it clicked that Oh, maybe there's something else out there besides Vendange. So, uh, that, so that actually, you said, oh, wow, not only did you read that wine might be a, a choice, you actually tasted that wine was a choice And, it, yeah, it was a revelation. Great. And has it now, has your love for wine now um, seesawed back into your, your work? Do, do, you, do you find yourself... Uh, no, we serve wine that costs about $2 a bottle. And people like it, and it's plenty good. It's banquets, it's weddings, and nobody seems to care. Okay, so you're not serving the Grigich uh, Zinfandel no, there? No, no. Well, uh, normally I ask my, uh, my guests to present their wine that they selected first, but I think today we're going to do the one I selected first, uh, as I think that would be the appropriate order to taste them in. Um, Matt and I, you, you and I have uh, often bonded over uh, wines that are a bit more esoteric and make not the norm. So for you today, I picked a wine from Slovenia. It is an orange wine made from Pinot Gris, uh, Weiss Riesling, which is a different Riesling than the one we all know, Chardonnay, uh, Treminer, and Sauvignon Blanc. It is... Uh, it's orange. It's an orange wine, correct. It's skin contact for about seven days, and then it sits on the lees for two years in neutral oak before, um, before bottling. So this is 2016. quite a bit of skin contact wine in that part of the world and um, recently uh, tasted this one and really liked it um, from a new cool shop in uh, Newark, New Jersey, Cool Vines. Um, what are your impressions? Where is that? It's um, in the same building as uh, Whole Foods. Like on Halsey or off Halsey? Right on Halsey, yeah, yeah. Right between Halsey and Broad, yeah. yeah. I'll have to go there, make a stop. I think you should. <laughs> It's so it's amazing, yeah. apricots and apricots. I wide. always, I always get um, from a lot of orange wine. There's um, and it's not just the color, but I get some of an impression of reminds me of iced tea a little bit. And there's something about the texturally, uh, it's unfiltered, so maybe that's a piece of it. Um, but there's there's something about it that brings out the wine for me. I find these. Um, I'm going to find these wines, good orange wines, um, to be super food friendly. Yeah, the acidity is there. So yeah. Have you had any before? No. Is this your first? This is the first. Good impression, bad impression? Good impression. I, it's, it's something I never even heard of. But there's almost a citrus behind it, too. There is, yeah. You get a, uh, I get a lot of bite of citrus and acid on the back end. Yeah. Yeah, it really kind of, um, it kind of hits you twice. So, so Slovenia, it's uh, 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 Baita is the winery. Kobel Baita. Uh, 21 bucks. Which is, you know, a good, good not too expensive, but, you know, yeah. it's you yeah. still have to go into the wallet a little bit. You do, a little bit, yeah. Dollars. It's not, um, you know, it's not sorry, everyday, everyday but, drinking for everybody. No. But, um, it's also these wines tend to be. Uh, it almost is like a red, in yeah, 
the legs and everything in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, texturally too. And that comes from sitting on the skins, I imagine. Yeah, um, yeah. The color comes and from the, the skins, leaves. and then for the leaves, two years on the leaves. Yeah. In some countries in Georgia, where they age them in uh, clay and amphora, cuervi, um, they sit on the skins uh, sometimes for six months. So the color is often even deeper than that. So, and I see that you picked for us. Tell tell us about the one you picked. This is from Lopez de Heredia in Spain. It's the third oldest house in Rioja. Uh, started in 1877. Still family owned, fourth generation. Uh, the great great granddaughter is the winemaker and runs it now. Uh, an, an amazing place. If you're ever in Rioja, it's in Haro, which is on the western end of Rioja. And the winery is beautiful. It's really old, old school. And inside, the entire place is covered by black mold, the penicillin mold. Oh, wow. It's amazing. The whole place, cobwebs in the corner. I mean, it's just, and they like it that way. Yeah. That's what they like. They have their own cooperage. Nothing, there's no new oak. Everything is old oak. The newer oak's done on some of their younger bottles, different vineyards. But Lar it's, large vats, I take it? It's large vats. It's uh, started in, and then it goes six years in barriques. Okay. Uh, usually American, but they just keep reusing the same barrels. Right. And so Cooper it's just fixes them. Ultimately in. like neutral oak yeah. because it's been used so many times. Uh, they're six years in barriques. This was bottled in so 2007, was bottled in 2015. And just released. Okay, so this five, year. so five years in bottle as well. They right? release it when they feel it's ready to drink, and it's for what it is. You can find it for forty dollars, forty five dollars. You can get a two thousand seven. Money's not. They don't need a. They've been around so long they don't need cash flow. So it's not like they throw their rosés out just to. The rosés yeah. are ten years old. Wow. The whites are. 12 years old it's it's gonna have a little yeah it's got a little darkening of the color but it's not, not not amber intensely so look at that way yeah lower alcohol you know 12 and a half 13 uh, oh. very perfumey nose some leather definitely leather some sage along with the you know, the fruit, mm. dried cherry, yeah. maybe. Yeah, definitely a little raspberry, Tobacco, maybe. Really nice finish, terrific acid. The acidity is still there. I mean, it's yeah. again great with food. Yeah, and and still good fruit. Like there's still plenty of fruit on it. It's not like it's. Uh, it still tastes pretty young. 13 years old, that's great. You said about 40 bucks. You can find it for $40, which is for a wine like this. Yeah, that's true. It's is amazing. It's just a tremendous, and if you're ever in Rioja, it's the winery to go to. It's yeah, I have to amazing. check it out for sure. And um, I think I'll go to these guys when I'm in Slovenia, which I get to I don't get know to. if I'm going to get to Slovenia. We'll see. I'm, well, I'm, I'm hoping to. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to get anywhere. That's the problem. I think we'll get somewhere one of these days. So, well, well, Matt, thank you so much. For My being pleasure, here. Gabe. Thank you Cheers. for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to yeah. talk to you.